Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about how to create this eye sculpture effect in Cinema 4D and Redshift. Now this is a snippet taken from a Patreon video I did a couple years ago and today we're going to be focusing primarily on using the volume builder and the volume mesher to create this shape in Cinema 4D. This is a really great technique for creating kind of organic shapes and that's what we're gonna be going over today. Now, if you wanna learn about the rest of the process where we light and texture and render it, then you can check that full video out on Patreon. But if not, this is gonna be packed full of tips and tricks for you guys to kind of take forward into your own work. So I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. This is the render from my initial test and this is just the scene with the bottle in place, a cube for it to sit on almost and a wall for the backdrop. So that is the scene setup, and let's start to build this. So before we dive into it, this is kind of the reference image that I was going off. So I'm just kind of having that to the side just to go off as we start to build this. So the first thing I wanna start off with is building the ice block as you're seeing on the left here. So we're actually gonna start off with a sphere. This is probably confusing because you would think of it as more of a cube-like shape, but we're gonna deform this so that eventually we do end up with something that does look more like a block. I also like to use the sphere because we have quite a few more segments and also just the overall shape of it allows us to use the displacer and kind of get more natural and organic forms. We're going to start off with the sphere and I'm going to change it to the hexahedron, which is going to give us this lovely quad topology, which is going to be just easier for us when it comes to displacing this object. The first thing I'll do is I will increase the amount of segments to 64. That's just going to subdivide that and allow us to get a lot more detail when it comes to displacing this sphere. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll grab the FFD deformer. So if I hold shift while I select this, it will make it a child by default. And now we basically have this cage around our sphere and we can use this to basically kind of push and pull this shape around whilst also keeping it procedural. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to dive out the camera and whilst I'm in point mode up here, I'm going to press control A, press T for scale and I'm just going to scale it down on the Z axis and then just kind of move that sphere and I'll quickly make it an X-ray. So I'll go to basic X-ray just so we can kind of see the bottle inside and let's just move that kind of to the center and we'll scale it maybe back a little bit. And what I want to do really is kind of scale down the width and scale the height slightly. So now it feels like more of a blocky shape as opposed to a perfect sphere. And this is going to be perfect for when it comes to displacing this, which is the next step. So again, I'm going to hold shift and grab a displacer. Now, the issue now is if I go to the shading tab of the displacer and add a noise, we're going to get some weird artifacts here where you can see the displacer stretching. And that's because of the hierarchy that we have here with the displacer and the FFD. So basically what's happening is we have the displacer and then we're kind of stretching the sphere before the displacer is actually being affected. So it's kind of stretching some of those polygons. Whereas if we put the FFD first, it's going to take that displacer and kind of just stretch it and consider that object already displaced, if that makes sense. So you just need to kind of be wary of the order you put your deformers because you may get some weird artifacts. So we're putting the FFD first and then the, the displacer and that should kind of solve any weird artifact you get with the polygons. So let's dive into the noise and as you can kind of imagine we're going to use this to add some deformation and build more of this organic shape that we're seeing on the left hand side. And what I like to do first of all is play with the noise type and also just the, the global scale. So let's change this first noise to turbulence. I like this one because it has kind of a bit more variation in it and you can see already how that adds a little bit more detail to our object. If we just flick through this, you can see we can get all sorts of different results. Um, but I kind of found through trial and error that turbulence was a pretty good one to start with. So I'm actually going to, instead of playing with the global scale, which obviously you can do to affect the look of this, I'm going to leave that at a hundred and instead play with the relative scale. So here we can change the scale on the X, the Y, and the Z axis. And I've got a few values I've jotted down. I found that around 70 looked pretty good in this case. 69, why not? Let's go for that. And then on the 
y-axis. Let's go for something like 80. So that's just going to dial in a little bit more detail kind of towards the top and bottom. So let's go for something like 84. And then let's kind of play with the z-axis and maybe something around 60 will look good. So you can see just by playing with those relative scales, we can dial in a little bit more detail and make it a little bit more interesting than if we just had like a uniform scale throughout. So we've already kind of dialed in some detail there. I'm just going to dial down the height of the actual displacer itself. So that feels now a lot more natural. And instead of just completely reshaping our object, it's now just being used to kind of deform it ever so slightly and just add some more of that variation. So what we can do now is start to add a little bit more detail by stacking some noises on top of each other. So whilst we're looking at this shading menu, we can just press the drop down arrow and go to layer. And now we can dive into here and start to stack some of these noises on top of each other. So we've got the overall shape and also you can change this by playing with the seed. So we could kind of flick through this until we find something we like the look of. So maybe something like this is quite nice because it does feel a bit more blocky. I'm quite happy with that. So let's leave it on uh, 684. And then we can just press this back arrow to go up a, up a page and we can turn on that other noise we made. So the second noise, what I'm gonna do is actually go for a smaller scale. So maybe we'll half the scale. That's just gonna bring in a little bit more detail. And what we can do then is actually add some contrast to this noise by scrolling down and going to the low clip and the high clip and just clamping these down ever so slightly. So maybe something like, I don't know, like 30, and then maybe we'll go for like 60 on here. And that's gonna look crazy at the moment, but what we can do is dive back into this and change this to add, and then reduce the intensity of this or the overall kind of opacity to something like this. And what that's gonna do is kind of just add these pockets where it sticks out or like kind of indents into the object. And that's just gonna help to kind of create more of that blocky shape and just add a little bit more detail to um, to our object. So let's maybe try something like 45 and that's gonna pad it out a little bit. And now it is quite bulky. So let's go into our first noise and using the, the low clip and the high clip, let's do something similar here. So maybe like 30 on the low clip. And then for the high clip, let's really kind of clamp that down. So maybe something like 60, like so. So now we have kind of a lot more contrast in our shape and let's add one more noise on here. And for this one, we'll use quite a small noise. So let's go for something like FBM, which is kind of this very small scale noise. And we'll just put it down to a super small scale, maybe something like five. And we can just clamp these down ever so slightly just to add a little bit more contrast. And what we'll do for this one is we'll change this to subtract turn down the opacity to something really low, like 10. And what that will do is that we'll just kind of cut out some parts of the objects. So you can see kind of on the side around here, how it's cutting some little kind of sharp points out of there, just adding some more indentation. And you can see just through those additional noises, we help to add some additional detail. So I'm going to go back to the first layer and just maybe kind of clamp this down a little bit more just to bring it back to its original size. And there we go. And there is our sphere. Let's change this to X-ray, see how the, the bottle's looking in there. So I don't think it looks too bad. I think maybe we can select all control A and just shrink down maybe the width of that. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we can just increase the height. That looks pretty decent. We don't have to worry too much about this intersecting along the bottom because we're going to use a trick later on to kind of blend this into the ground and almost like kind of cut it off of the bottom. So that isn't too much of a problem at the moment. What I will quickly do is just subdivide this and have a look at the overall shape. And if I pull up my reference quick, this is kind of like a blend of both of them where this is a bit more jagged. That's a bit more of like a block shape. Probably we're leaning more to this one on the left-hand side. And I think maybe we're pushing it a little bit too far. So let's go into the first displacer and maybe just kind of take away some of that contrast like that. And then maybe this one's doing quite a lot of uh, extrusions as well. So maybe we can just bring that back a little bit. Maybe change that to something like 30 and that's just going to help to take that away and then that's fine. Maybe we can take a little bit of the contrast out of this. Okay. 
And what you can do if you're, you find you're getting a bit too much detail is you could turn down the octaves to something like three and that's just going to make that a bit softer. Uh, you can see how you crank that up. It changes. So maybe we'll go for something like 2.7. That is pretty good. And then layer those other two back on. And now we have something like this. Okay. So this looks pretty cool and we can just get rid of that subdivision surface for now. That's fine. And what the next step is, is to actually put this into a volume builder. So we're going to hold alt on our keyboard as we select this and that will make the sphere a child of the volume builder and then we'll do the same and grab a volume mesh now obviously this just completely disappeared our sphere made it vanish so let's turn the voxel size down to something like one maybe even lower maybe like 0.2 now just bring in that detail back in which is great and the first thing we want to do is obviously cut out the bottle from this object so let's drag in our bottle into the volume builder i'm actually going to control drag it so we still keep the original one in place and then we can change this to subtract now what may happen here is obviously because the bottle is completely inside we may have to just bring that sphere back until we get something like this where it starts to kind of poke out the front so let's do that and maybe just bring that sphere back ever so slightly. And now you kind of get a result like this where because we have decided to subtract it, we get this really nice kind of rounding around the bottle where it feels actually like it's morphing around the bottle, which is really, really nice. Now, obviously it looks a little bit jagged at the moment. So now we can add some SDF smooths just to kind of soften everything out a little bit. So let's add a SDF smooth and instead of Gaussian, we'll change this to mean and maybe drop down the voxel distance to one and maybe the iterations up to something like two or three. And that's just going to kind of blur those edges a little bit, which is nice. And then maybe we can add another SDF smooth this time with Gaussian and just a voxel distance of one. So now we have this quite smooth finish to our block. And what I might do is actually get the FDF, select all and just increase the width of this ever so slightly. Maybe move the sphere over like this. And I think this is looking a little bit better. So let's maybe just bring it forward a little bit so it encompasses a little bit more of the bottle like so and now it's the bottle's kind of just creeping out and maybe i'll just get the rectangle selection and just kind of bring this in on the left a little bit and this is kind of the basic setup for this so once we've got this in place there's a few things we can do so we can take the cube which is our floor and this is why i chose a cube because if we were to just use a plane and subtract it uh, it wouldn't quite work the same so what we'll do is we'll control drag our cube into our volume builder drag it below all the SDF smooths and we'll set this to subtract. And now you can see it's going to subtract the bottom of our kind of ice block from the floor. So you can see without it, it kind of intersected and now it's uh, rounding it off of the box. So now it's not intersecting, which is perfect. So hopefully you found this video helpful. This has been quite a popular one over the years. So I was really excited to be able to share part of it on YouTube for you guys. If you want to watch the rest of the process, you can do that over on Patreon and we talk about lighting, texturing and rendering this scene. So there's a lot more information to be shown in the full video. So feel free to go and check that out if you'd like. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.